welcome to our salon. Today we're going to give you um, some examples of how to actually prepare a dog before the bath. This is uh, predominantly carried out on all breeds in the same fashion with the exception of ear plucking which we'll cover later on. Before we start actually preparing the dog we need to consider the Animal Welfare Act and make sure that the five freedoms are actually considered and taken into consideration. We must always make sure that they're in a safe and comfortable environment. And if you wonder why we have a head loop on the dog, this is to stop the dog from making a sudden jump off the table. Though our hands remain on it all the time, it's just an added bonus to help us to make sure the dog doesn't become injured. When we prepare a dog, it's quite important that we make sure that the coat is not free before it goes in the bath because otherwise the knots will just become great big mats that end up having to be clipped and you'll have trouble drying the coat. We look at the feet to deal with the nails and the under, hair, under feet hair to make sure that there are no knots within the actual pad. We'll look at the ears and make sure they're clean and free from any problems. And also at the same time, it is customary in our salon to run a customary health check across the dog looking for lumps, bumps, warts, anything that's different, anything that's odd that we may need to bring to the attention of the owner or that we actually need to take into consideration for while we're doing the work. We are going to show you preparation on a Scotty puppy which will give you an idea of how they can fiddle and jump around a bit. This is his first full groom and he's a lovely dog and he is a wire coated dog and his sister and he will, well his sister already is a show dog, he will eventually be a show dog when he's fully grown. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Sarah and Sarah will actually be doing the hands-on work with the exception of anything that causes a problem. Okay, as you can see Sarah is wearing a protective overall which is fairly good for stopping some of the hair that comes through into your own clothes whilst you're grooming. It's always advisable to wear some sort of protective clothing and also to take care that you clear hair around the salon up as soon as possible because if it gets blown by a dryer it can cause injury to you and to others and it's not good to ingest for health and safety reasons. What we're going to do now is look at the dog's ears and we're going to clean the dog's ears and hopefully make sure it's free and got no ear infections. Sarah, if you'd like to just examine the dog's ears and then just actually give them a bit of a clean. The way to check is you can get discharge if there are ear infections and also sometimes a very horrible, waxy, awful smell that can actually say there are infections. Okay, The dog um, sometimes doesn't like their ears being cleaned because the actual formula is cold. So we use the word cold to them and they sort of get used to it over the times that they come to us. It's cold. Good boy. Good boy. And then we just clean the outer part of the ear. You would never go into the ear canal. That is dangerous and you can rupture ears and do all sorts of damage. We're not vets and we should never attempt to be vets and we should only clean the outer surfaces and remove any wax that's obvious. Good boy. Who's a good boy? And when you're working with a puppy, the thing that you need to do is to make sure that he has confidence in what you're doing to him. And that is obviously something that he's just obtained trust and gained trust in Sarah. Okay, Sarah's now sort of gently rubbing him along his body and just feeling for knots, mats, lumps. Okay, we're using scissors to actually remove the hair from under the feet. You can use a clipper or a toe blade. We're using, as you can see, if Sarah demonstrates, ball nose scissors which are rounded at the end to prevent injury to the dog's pad. Okay, so what Sarah's going to do is going to look for any excess hair over the pad and on the foot. The way that um, the foot should be is if you were to actually put it into ink and press it down onto a piece of paper, you should be able to see the actual form of the, the pads itself without any hair. And as you can see, she's removing some of the hair. And it's a bit ticklish for puppies, so you have to be very careful. Good boy. Mind your nose, good boy. And this also makes you aware of the fact that dogs sometimes don't like what you're doing, so you do have to be very gentle because you can injure them. And he's let you do that one, so that's something, but he said that's enough when he's off. Basically, we're going to do a sanitary on this dog, which is um, around the genital areas and also sometimes in the armpits. 
we actually shave out on a very close blade so that they don't get knots and mats. And what happens is if you don't do that, you can find that it's very uncomfortable, especially for boy dogs that tend to have little accidents and it makes them smell and it's just not healthy. And the last thing you want is flies to lay their eggs or anything like that around a dirty soiled area. Sarah's now going to help me. There are two ways you can do it. You can either lift the dog's leg up, but because this is a young growing dog, I'm just going to quickly pop him up on his back legs being supported by Sarah and then I can get in there and do the clipping very quickly. Thanks, Sarah. As you can see, just he comes regularly and in eight weeks he's actually matted up in certain areas and that would be very unpleasant and actually go into other fur and start to cause problems. Okay, now we're going to actually check for knots and remove any mats and bits and pieces out of the coat before bathing. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take a brush and a comb and run them through the actual dog. Sarah is going to demonstrate how to actually do that. So I'll move out of the way and she's going to do the dog's face, which is often a difficult thing to do because dogs don't like their head being held because it's their only defence mechanism. As you can see, she's not pulling him, she's not jolting him, she's just reacting in a calm fashion and keeping the dog calm too. And he's quite happy. The last thing you want to do is stress a dog in this area because it will mean that you'll always have trouble grooming in the future. She's taking each section with the brush and going through, working from the top down and making sure there are no knots. If you were to put him in with knots, that would all come out matted and you'd end up having to cut fur away if you couldn't remove the mats. Good boy. With a puppy, when you're brushing through, I would recommend after you've brushed them through and got all knots out before the bath, I'd give them a 10 minute break because it's quite a new experience for them and the last thing you want to do is to actually stress them after the in the grooming process so that when they come back again they're scared. And the reason we use a comb and a brush is the, cut, the comb will actually find any knots that the brush can skim over. All too often as a groomer you'll see dogs come into the salon where the owners religiously brush their dogs and they do it really well but it skims over the top and unfortunately underneath are knots that are back to the skin which are uncomfortable and need removing with a clipper. It doesn't matter where on the body you would still use a brush and a comb. And you always pay particular attention to the food areas because dogs with beards quite often get knots in that area. We use specialist style brushes as well, depending on the type of knots that we come across. These are called um, Les Poochies and come from America and they are absolutely brilliant at removing stuff. And as you can see there's quite a catch there and he doesn't like it. Good boy, good boy, calm down. And after using that brush, you can see the comb is now virtually passing through freely. And if we find any more knots, we would remove them and carry on until that area is clear. Okay. As promised, we're now going to cover ear plucking. That is done in predominantly dogs that have got ears that close down over the ear canal, such as Shih Tzus, Larsas, Poodles, Bichons. The only thing that it is not done on is a Spaniel. Um, the reason for removing the ear hair is to actually encourage airflow into the ear canal to prevent ear infections, to stop ear mites and just general health and well-being of the dog. Sarah is now going to demonstrate how to inspect and to pluck ears. You can use a plucking powder but as always instructed plucking powder should not go into the ear canal and you should use the tiniest of tiniest amount if the ear is greasy and that will actually stop you from slipping and hurting the dog when you pluck the ear. And as you can see, the dog is laying there quite comfortably. This dog is used to this and it's been done from a very young age. The only time we would not pluck an ear is if the vet has instructed us not to do so or the owner has requested not to do so. Also, if we find severe ear infection, we would never pluck ear and would refer it to a veterinary surgeon. And both sides of the ears are checked. It doesn't stop you from cleaning the ears, that's quite important too. 
but any loose ear hair that's in the ear canal can be removed. You can use forceps but I personally prefer to use fingers because it means that if the dog jolts you're not likely to perforate an eardrum or stick it in the ear canal. As you can see it's not causing the dog any distress as I said earlier and regular maintenance on that means it's very few hairs that come out at any one time and that's ear plucking demonstrated. We're now going to show you how to cut nails. What we're first of all going to show you is different sizes of nail clippers. This is used for large breeds, golden retrievers, Dobermans, German Shepherds. Then there is a, a next size down, which we would use for Shih Tzus, Larsas, Poodles, Bichons. And also we then have a final size, which could be used for puppies, cats or tiny claws. And the reason we use different sizes is because it allows you flexibility and prevents you from cutting the quick and making the dog bleed. The last thing you want is to actually injure the dog because once they're injured, they tend to not want to have their nails clipped again afterwards. This dog is used to having her nails clipped, so her nails are relatively short. So what we're going to do is rather than use one of the big nail clippers, we're going to use the one that we would use for puppies or, or kittens or cats because she doesn't have that much to remove on the nails. But Sarah is now going to demonstrate actually how to remove the tip of the nail where the nail is too long. Always, always make sure you do not go near the pink. The pink is the cuticle like we have in our own nails and if you cut that it will bleed and then you will need something called Trimex or anticoagulant to stop the bleed and it's very unpleasant for the dog, it's not fair. There's no need to actually cut these quicks when you can clearly see them. On black nails there is obviously more of a possibility because you cannot see the quicks but there are tests that you can do by just giving a tiny squeeze before you actually make the cut and if the dog pulls away it often means that there's quick there and you would just move further down the nail to actually stop cutting the quick. Thank you. We mentioned briefly about stopping bleed if you do cut the quick we use something like Trimex or an coagula anticoagulant that will actually stop the actual bleed. The only thing is you have to be careful with this powder because it does go um, rock hard if you don't seal it properly in a damp environment and also it can stain the fur. And always, always, if you do clip a dog's nail, for the owner's benefit and the dog's benefit, you should tell them that you've done so. It's not fair to let them find out by finding the fact that they've got a yellow stain on the nail. We're now going to demonstrate to you how to hand strip and that's used on wire coats who's um, one of our visually impaired dogs because he's lost an eye and we try and keep it so that you can't see that too much and he's going to allow us to demonstrate how we hand strip. Sarah's going to actually demonstrate a section of the tail because we, they take so long it can take up to four hours to hand strip a dog this size so we're just going to do a small section for you. And the idea is to actually remove the hair in the direction of the growth and actually only remove the hair that comes out easily. As you can see, there is no distress to the dog. If you get a piece of hair and it will not remove, it means it's not ready and you should not try to yank it out because it will be painful for the dog. Hand stripping, as you can see, can cause lots of problems. It can cause RSI in the groomer and it can also cause discomfort to the dog if done incorrectly and it can actually board them if one spot is continuously done. We have tools that we can use as well which I will demonstrate short, which Sarah will demonstrate shortly but I'll just let you watch for a moment so you can see how the hair comes out. We are now going to show you some of the equipment you can use for hand stripping. The first thing is a stripping stone which is put in your hand and you use it as you strip as a coarse texture to pull the hair out against. You can also use it with uh, stripping powder or without. Next are the fingerettes which fit onto your thumb and your first finger and are made of some sort of um, synthetic rubber and you literally proceed to the, the dog and actually start to strip by pulling and it pulls out any loose hair. Again always in that direction it's just another way of actually using the hand stripping equipment. We then have stripping knives which can be plastic or wooden and Sarah's going to demonstrate with the wooden one and again it's you take down in a motion 
and it helps to remove the fur. And as you can see, fur is still coming out from the towel section that we are doing. You can get fine or coarse coats and that's different in the actual teeth. And what Sarah is doing with the plastic one is she's using a fine one so that will take out more hair than the coarse one was doing. And finally, we have something that some groomers use, which is called a coat king, and that helps to take out some of the dead fur. Um, it's not strictly full hand strip by using this, but it does help and cut down on some of the preparation time if you're actually under a time constraint. And as you can see, if Sarah shows you what's actually in the coat king once she's finished, it pulls out just the actual dead undercoat because you want to leave the top waterproof stuff there. And it makes the coat lay flatter and helps to improve the look of the dog.